Okay, this is going to be a quick video just going over the hidden cost behind alpha channels in your textures in Unreal Engine. So alpha channels, very popular way to pack in a opacity mask or something similar uh, in order to save on texture samples and reduce the amount of textures that you have inside of a material and in your project. So just to showcase, we have two materials here. I have one that has a packed texture, and on this one you can see that it has an alpha channel, and that alpha channel is driving the opacity of this material. So if I disconnect this real quick, you will see it update, and so this is no longer uh, translucent where it should be, and it's opaque everywhere, so this actually drives that translucency. And I have that baked into this texture under the alpha channel. And along with it, I have metallic and red, uh, roughness in green and ambient occlusion in blue, very standard practice. Now, if I go to this other one, I have the exact same material. It's set up in the same way. The only difference is that instead of having this opacity mask in the alpha channel, I have it as a separate texture. That's the only difference. So you can see that between these two materials, they look identical. The only real difference uh, is there's an extra texture sample. So if I look at the stats down below, I have six out of 16 with a shader count of seven. And if I go back to the previous one, I have 15 with a shader count of 12. That's partly because I just changed this. It should be five and it's gonna jack up there just due to how Unreal does things. But if I reopen them real fast, you can see that they've updated. They're now identical. Um, but you still have that extra texture sample. So these are, for the most part, identical. There's no real difference, minus uh, one has a bit more clutter because you have a whole other texture sample here. And yeah, uh, pretty simple. So this is a very common practice to bake it into an alpha channel. And the main reason for that is, once again, just simplify things, uh, less texture samples to deal with, makes your materials cleaner once they get more complex, uh, reduces the amount of files that you have on disk, and because of that, you tend to see this technique all over the place. You see it in different production studios, you see it on tutorials on YouTube, you see it in Udemy courses and so on. So I see a lot of people using this. However, even though these materials look identical, and if I go to the shader complexity under the optimization view mode, so just go to lit optimization view modes, shader complexity, I can see that they're pretty much identical in terms of performance. They are slightly different when it comes to being on disk. So let me go to these actual textures to show you what I mean. So if I go into uh, this one, this is the packed texture, and this is the one with no alpha channel. So you can see that the alpha channel is grayed out here. If I click on it, nothing happens, but I have the red, green, and blue. So the red being the metallic, green being the roughness, and the blue being the ambient occlusion, right? So three textures packed into this. It's a 4K texture. So over here on the right, you can see it's 4096 by 4096. And if we look down below here, we can see the resource size. So the resource size is its size on disk. So it's uh, almost 11,000 kilobytes or 11 megabytes when you convert. Now, if I go to the other one, this is the exact same texture. The only difference, which you can see, is that it has the alpha channel, right? So I've essentially baked that opacity mask that you saw in that material into the alpha channel of this texture. That is the only difference. Now, if we look over here on the right, you can see that it's still 4K, right? Nothing's changed there. However, the resource size is actually doubled, right? It's close to 22,000 kilobytes instead of, instead of 11,000 or 22 megabytes when you convert. Now, the reason for that is because when it comes to alpha channels and compression, they have to compress the alpha channel as though it's these three channels, more or less in terms of size. I know the exact uh, programming and math behind it. That was a oversimplification, but in essence, the alpha channel is as large as the red, green, and blue combined. So as soon as you add an alpha channel, you double the size of the texture. Now, you might be thinking that's not such a huge deal because if we think about it, if we were to just open up the separate one, this by itself is 11,000. So if you have this plus the one without the alpha channel, it's the exact same size on disk as just having the one. So why wouldn't you just want the single texture instead of having both, right? Doesn't that seem a bit more optimized? Well, the problem is while they're the same right now, should you need to optimize your texture memory later on in production, let's say you're targeting something like a lower spec PC or 
perhaps a console or a Nintendo Switch, something like that, you might not have the same amount of texture memory available to you to stream. And because of that, you have to make some optimizations. So let's say you want to lower the size of your uh, mask, right? So your mask that drives the opacity. You wanna lower the size of this because you don't really need 4K for this because on those lower spec machines, they're not running uh, as high of resolutions for their monitors because they can't drive that. So they have less pixels to actually see these. So if this gets a little blurry on the cutout, it's not gonna be that noticeable to them, right? It's not gonna be a huge deal. Um, so that's a really good way to lower your texture size. So let's say I lower the MIP value uh, to two, right? So instead of 4K, now it's 1K over here on the right as far as displayed. Now you'll notice the resource size didn't uh, update here because this is just a preview. I'm not actually changing the size of it right now. I'm just showing what MIP2 looks like. But what you could do is on a package, so like when you package up your game to be an executable to run on a machine for Steam or something like that, you could say that all of your alpha channels are going to be, or rather your opacity masks, not your alpha channels, you're going to cap them at MIP2. So you're going to say the largest they can be is 1K. So that's going to drastically reduce the size on disk and open up a lot more performance. The problem is that if your opacity mask is baked in, you can see that we also crunched all three of these other textures to 1K, even though we didn't really want to because we want those to stay really nice. So even though I only want to affect that alpha channel, I'm forced to affect the entire texture, right? I have to crunch down my metallic, my roughness, and my ambient occlusion. That's kind of unfortunate. Well, yes, it does solve your problem. It makes all of your textures also look worse rather than just making the opacity look worse, right? Which is a lot less noticeable. Now, if you had a separate texture instead of baking it in, now I have the ability to set all of these as a single texture group. And I could say that texture group, which is maybe like opacity mask or something like that. I'm going to set all those to a max MIP of two on package. So now... I was able to set this guy to 1K, but this remains at 4K. So my metallic, my roughness, and my ambient occlusion are unaffected, and I can just crunch down specifically the opacity mask. So you can see where this actually gives you a lot more options while being the same size up front. The only difference you're gonna notice is that the actual materials, once again, are just going to have uh, a slight bit more complexity because you have more uh, textures to deal with, more wires to connect. So it can make your materials a bit more cumbersome, but at the end of the day, it gives you a lot more flexibility than going with something like this because you now have more control over the individual channels or not channels rather, but individual textures that are baked into the channels because you've separated them out and now you can control them on their own Thus, you have a lot more options when it comes to making your game performance on different build targets at the end of the day. So it can really save your butt later on in production. So hopefully this was helpful, gave you a bit more insight into uh, should you or should you not pack alpha textures. Typically, I do not for this reason, and uh, it'd be up to you if you want to do it or not for your production, but I think it's worth knowing, and it could save your butt later on. So yeah, if this was helpful, let me know, leave a comment, drop a like. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I'm trying to upload more and more. So if you want to see more videos like this, if you found it helpful, go ahead and subscribe. And yeah, have a nice day.